thing that a lot of people do wrong is they have a complete misunderstanding of what Tantra actually is. That is a practice of essentially getting yourself in a tantric meditative state, how to actually go about it, and then obviously most importantly, why it's effective and uh, exactly more precisely, what is the exact impact that it has in our day-to-day over our activities. So to go quickly into it, what is Tantra? Tantra is essentially the methodological approach of taking or approaching your meditative session with the purpose and vision and intention in mind of essentially not only connecting with all senses in the most deeply uh, fashionably erotic sensual and um, vividly how do you call it vividly what is a synonym of uh, a sensation likened to the tickling of feathers that so it, basically that's what you're trying to achieve And that's the mood you're going for. And then more so, you're essentially trying to incorporate that into the way that you make the connection between mind to body, mind to nerves, mind to muscles, and then nerve to everything that I just mentioned. And by doing the latter, that is nerve to dash, um, what will happen is the natural essential aggregation of of all the systems and faculties and modalities of operations that comprise and summarize what we know has the human experience that is the human physical experience now to go further into the exact aspect of the specialization niches if you will that is or defines or makes tantra from something else it is more so in regards to the aspects that lead to making a connection between what one is sensing, the, um, what do you call it? Visibly um, sensual, erotic partner to that. And then um, completing the triangle and finalizing the bridge with the symbolic, if you want, um, mantra or mind map multi-dimensional concept that essentially tied together everything that is the instance of that mind state at that particular space and time right so that's why if you see in a lot of uh, uh like super fucking like yoked out or like actual legit uh mint gurus when they um, in part the teachings of Tantra, they always approach it from the steps and formulations of the post, the postures first, the going about of the breathing, right? The disciplinization of the, uh, the mental uh, mechanistic processes that essentially comprise one's way of holding oneself right in tandem with the normal force one's uh, way of um, folding oneself in terms of the normal force and then more specifically contextually um, bringing in the direction and plane in which one is folding into right so if you're going backwards and you're doing the bridge you there's a particular position one two three four all the way to the end bridge position that makes up what you would call one swaggy ass blueprint for what would be um sound tensegrity mechanics to execute that particular bridge right if you're trying to do um for example the handstand there is a precise position one two three etc etc to the end handstand position 
I comprise what one would be the swag blueprint of what a swaggy ass execution of a perfect handstand sequencing would look like. There's all these things that they just layer onto it. And if you want to take it from uh, the view of uh, uh, level one, level two, level three, level four, a la Rosetta Stone, they always take it from um, stand, like crouched, crouching tiger, like crouch lotus style palm position to, uh, what do you call this? Uh, when you squat, half squat like, or the, on your, is it on your knees? And you're like this? You like squat, but you have one hip like this, right? So that position to standing, fully standing, and then doing this all the way up to like bending forward down, all the way up to the what we call the what we call that C dolphin guppies, the what you want to call it, inverse bridge, all the way up to back to bending, all the way up to standing like this and straight, right? And in that whole cycle of keyframe physical and anatomical um, arrangements, there is a particular intelligence that is deployed at each moment that makes up a logical unfolding of all these things. So when you see them do it, it is so fluid, like reading a fucking gorgeous ass book where every move leads perfectly into the other without any kink, friction, or sense of bottleneck in any way, shape, or form. Because it is as if you're just going with the breath, wending through the moments of life, brought about by the gusts of change, and then swayed by the rotors of destiny. <laughs> right? And that's really what I think in my head makes it such a beautiful and iconic um, masterpiece to whip, witness and withhold every single time. Because humanity, the physical test, tapestry of, when in the process of executing something intentional with an alignment to what is perfectly sound, has this magnificence to it that just captivates and takes you away for the ever ending others. And then when that effect is compounded, as in the context of a story, you just can't help falling in love with the ballad of what it is you're seeing in front of you. In front of you. All right, so that's a typical approach and that's why. Now to go into uh, the how of why this is important, Every single time you're uh, at a particular keyframe position, for example, the standing salute to the, what do you call it, saluting the moon to the bridge, they are um, what you're calling, what um, some mentors have referred to as bioenergetics, right? Or if you want to call it meridians plus myofascia plus uh, energy lines that, are per that have to be activated in order to essentially make the motor functions that cause this position to come into place as we want, right? And in this, there are, if you want, particularly nuanced muscles that are activated that will never ever be activated again because the only way they come into activation is in the super fucking specific, super fucking specialized, super fucking like unique, unfolding of the tensor flexor muscles in a way that's arranged with a precise uh, range of motion plus direction that causes this like particular unfold unfolding of your wrist flexor or something or your arm bicep to shoulder right that leads into another move and every single time this wave is occurring those muscles along those energy lines are being activated and essentially being you can think of it as being celebrated right everyone gets a moment to shine in the spotlight so because of this there is an activation that is complete total and holistic and essentially touching all facets of the human system right so we're not just talking about the myofascia the physical we're talking about the different central nervous systems the limbic 
right? Um, uh, the etheric, et cetera, right? All of these things are being activated. And because unlike all other types of workouts where due to the sheer serendipity essence of it, like an arms workout or a bicep workout or a legs workout or shoulder workout, no matter how creative you, you can be, at the end, we'll always have a particular machinations of specifically and repeatedly, um, if you want to call it predictable, muscle groups and, if you want to put it, uh, key tension points and forced angled applied pressure upon the body that will be seen again and again and again and again, regardless of the variance of the particular exercise in that day, the way that it's done, the, even the frequency of the sets. There will always be a predictable set of motor units or muscle groups and, or activation points that will be seen and celebrated every single time a shoulders, arms work, legs workout is performed. And unlike this, Tantra is radically different because every single time it is done because the focus is on the moving wave right and thus just like the ever expressing expression of movement there is like an in, infinite myriad of possibilities that can occur when there is a flip or a switch or transition from the standing to like crouched to crouched to like uh squat stance to like squat stance to like fully crouched right there's like these micro moments allow for like range of this of the spectrum of expressions that make it to where you can touch parts of your body that you never knew existed right and that is why it is so central at its essence and that was very precise and even uh maybe near almost incessantly annoying in using that word Central over and over in my explanation of this because uh, first to define for the sake of swag fruitful conversation blah, 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 blah. Look at my notes. If you'll see the full exhortation definition of um, I'll define Central has just the sentiment or flavor or tone or overall mood dash hyphen dash vibe of being fluid likened to someone uh, going from shaking a girl's hand to uh, moving in for a kiss as they're coming closer together on the dance floor, right? You've seen people, if the smoothness is so fucking swaggy too, it's as if it's like nearly instantly, like the moment they just locked eyes, it's just like a magnet drawn to it. Make out kiss on open, right? To me, that is the representation or the multi-dimensional definition of sensual. It is as if uh, the tandem of the pulse at which you're keeping your pace of the present moment, the thing that which you essentially check on to see how you go about being present to the moment allows for a particular permutation that makes up a specific manifestation in the physical world that we see and comprise as specific and unique, really organic and fluid between one another, uh, key moments in time that essentially blur together due to the art form of the physical escalation of the human hand, causing it to seem as if it was a maestro a composition or a dance, right? Like we talk about sex being just like a fucking dance where it's like the man being there and the woman being there and like their the rhythm are just constantly doing this. And so a moment when they're like both one doing this, the other one doing this perfectly, just matching, right? It is a perfect, constant um, ebb and check of that go for fuck flow vibe that is human mating and to me that is how it relates sensual sensuality right and to add to tantra it always um it has this wonderful and special 
aspect of itself of cultivating that ability of being sensual as a human or as a life form first because cats are i've seen super sensual cats and dogs and even squirrels right being alive is just the metric of expression so anyone can achieve this you just have to breathe and thus um, essentially when one is extremely in touch with uh that capability of their sub communication they're able to essentially um, flow through time and space in a way so it is as if there is literally no delineation or hard delimiter or tell between for which one can tell this present moment from the next moment it is that metric that defines how sensual someone is he has a way of making it seem as if everything just is right and that oneness makes it to where those moments when there's a peak and those moments where there's a valleys are super fucking celebrated because they come out in a unique way that is super integrated and holistic with one another and that is the fucking beauty of life and how sweet the spice of the sensuality makes the steak. Now, to add to the impact, well, I just clearly ratted off how fucking game changing that could be to someone's pickup life or dating life. Like me being single, being able to like super, super fucking calibratingly escalate to them in a way that report is maintained, um, attraction is present. And then, uh, what do you call it? Uh, physical or sexual comfort is compounded, right? Oh, I'm going to have to write that down. Uh, what did I say? Attraction is maintained. Physical. physical when those three things can occur in a way that is literally moving with the uh, with a strong relation to the growth rate at which this uh, intimate relationship or this relationship is taking intimate evolution so many crazy things gonna happen, right? This is where one night stands come from. This is from where you meet a girl, you make a raunch on open, and then you pull her around the corner to fuck her behind a dumpster. Like wild sex playboy girl and playboy girl savages, right? Or you just happen to run into her in the park and you fuck her on the bench, right? Because between the fucking you taking your cock out and she sucking it to you penetrating her and you saying hello there is no fucking uh explicitly uh expressible or expressed or sensed uh, uh if you want to call it fluidity or change or difference in the energy of intent as a caveat, this is so fucking awesome. This is coming out because this has been something that's been so long on my mind. One of the things that make, um, so I, I'll always refer to this scene in myriad of contexts. Goku training for Cell Games when he turns Super Saiyan 2, Form 1, and he gets that super fucking power heavy, but top laden form. And he says, huh, I am hard, but I cannot hit. I am hard, but I cannot walk. Right? I cannot move. My speed is low. Uh, my base is thick, but my speed is lacking. Right? And so he just powers down, understanding that essentially. Uh, so all this time I've essentially wanted to break that. What happens is this. 
When you turn super thin, what happens? Okay, so fundamental forces of physics is a force going like this, and a force going like this, right? This is the force that's applied by you onto gravity, right? M times G, mass times gravity. This is the force that is essentially holding you up, right? The theory is that if there was no force that was present, I was just literally acting in a counter, uh, counter, if you want to put it, counter quantum way. That means counterbalance or counter direction, counter force, counter direction, ca counter magnitude, etc., etc. What would happen is this force would essentially keep traveling all the way to the ground and we just sink. And because as it stands, when we stand somewhere, we do not sink into the ground, then there must be, by reason, a force or an element present that is essentially causing or playing the function of the role of negating that downward pressure or that downward application of force that we apply as a natural way onto the earth and towards the core, right? Now, Super Saiyans, what happens is when they essentially power up, so you see that what happens is actually this force is going down. It actually increases, right? The force of gravity is increasing. And then what happens is um, at some point they uh, they unleash it. So think of a, a, a drilling for oil, right? You go all the way down, all the way down. You put pressure down there. You pump, pump, pump. And what happens? Pressure builds up and then just right that's literally the same concept when someone first flash forms super sand and you will see it because it goes emphasis on this thing and the fact that all of these always stay like this that force that jutting out at the top is literally the direct manifestation of the fact that it goes over and over and over, and that is the frequency of a particular super saiyan form power level. So, everyone to calculate that, and you're a physician or an engineer, I saw it. just gave it to you. Now, going further, going back to Goku shit, and I'm so fucking happy this is coming out because there's so much swaggy shit to it. Anyways, um, what he realizes by Increasing the, the, the normal force or the force applied by gravity, although it was essentially creating greater magnitude in terms of the force or the level of the wave when it's unleashed, right? It goes, zoop, zoop. and if you had like a flat chart and you just drew it out, right, it would create a high magnitude, high peak to peak. Although that was true, the fact that the length between each, uh, if you want to call it, change in curvature was too fucking small. Meaning he would go like this, right? High power, but because there was no width, right? Um, that essentially likened to no uh, ability for the dynamic side lateral meridians to really expand and activate and take advantage of this downward to upward flow energy circuit created by this. So that's essentially the basis behind uh, Super Saiyan. Another way of thinking about this, uh, if you watch, uh, uh, if you're a fan of Street Fighter or Tekken, right? Notice how they always go. They always do something like down, left, right, right? Down, pull from the ground, charge, left, unleash out so you're doing this so you can draw onto it and then right is redirect energy and flow to essentially uh meet your needs right what you do is you pull you pull from the ground and at some point you do like a bicep curl flick of the wrist so essentially redirect it and it's the same thing with ross and gone or kamehameha he always goes down back and left Right. So if you watch any of a, uh, a while ago, I actually, it was like a freeze, long time ago on Facebook. Here's this badass fucking beautiful, like 
energy work video. I'll actually uh, I'll hunt for it. I'll put it in the comments. It goes through like different uh, uh, a solid fucking if you want to put it energy therapy practice circuit session, right? Like uh, if you want to put it machinations in different positions on top of uh, things specifically related to um, dealing with centering, grounding, uh, solving, or therapy application of uh, um, recurring ailments, right? Like energy problems, migraines, uh, low energy, um, things like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, lack of uh, fatigue or insomnia, right? Or even something like uh, uh, odd, um, odd time naps, like when you randomly just pass out, like or odd energy sinks. When all of a sudden you're like, and you just crash, shit like that. There's some mirror shit. Like check that out. It's a really dope video. But one of the things is, uh, you, I love the way it's produced too. Like, dude, uh, super uh, saturated and added, uh, and really turn up the light contrast levels. So you could really see uh, the clouds and his white robe pulling out, contrasted with like the yellows of the environment. So when he would do something, you could clearly see every fucking detail. And it just made the video so much more infinitely valuable, right? And one thing I noticed, just as I'm mentioning, he does the same thing. It's like, this is grounded, right? You ground and pull, and then you just pull it up top, and then you do whatever. And it's pretty fucking awesome in the way that that simple fucking physio at a nap execution can create so much game changing things to occur, right? Like a rosin gone that can destroy trees with one five inch ball. It just goes to show the power of pressurized life force, or chi, as we know it. Now, going back to all of this, um, in his understanding of the his increased um, ability to essentially ground and pull larger reservoirs of energy, basically creating a thicker energy stream bandwidth, he understood that... Um, Though the stream was thick, it also meant that it was less malleable, right? When you have a huge hose, you can't bend it as much. In a sense, because this fucking hose is only this high, right, from the ground up, you only have so much time and so much space between your hips or your, your, your abdomen to your top of the uh, shoulders and so essentially you rotate and uh, what do you call it? Re-engineer the direction of energy flow in the ways that you like. In the in the context of Goku, when he's essentially jutting all of that out, because the power level is so high, what would end up often happening is due to the sheer volume being pulled by the fucking energy stream. There was essentially a uncontrolled release trickle leakage of power and energy that was just outburst that no matter how hard he tried could not be malleable. Hence the conclusion and decision to go back to base form, start over again by raising power pool energy level at base form and then essentially increasing to that efforts by uh, upping the overall energy activity, right? That's raising your power level. Hey, Coco Buns, it's been a minute. Long time no chat. Hope you've been good. I'd we'll love to like touch base with you on an uh, inbox or something. Uh, also, feel free to text me. Uh, Snapchat and Facebook. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I can't.
remember it at all, my friend. Anyways, uh, due to the lack of malleability and essentially choppy fucking form of this new onset or new variant of this Ray Super Saiyan form, he felt it to be no good or unconducive to practical combat applications. When you're all, when all you're doing during combat is just ensuring that your actual punch, that you're redirecting on that big ass stream, because it's so big. I mean, imagine like typically a stream goes from it. it, it, it we're talking about exoskeletons, right? This is the, uh, so if, if, uh, if anyone has read uh, the Tao of Jikundu, that's a great fucking book. Uh, it literally gives you the game. Like, this nigga is a fucking genius. Oh, my God. There is so many things in that book. But it all stems from the fucking center, right? Your body is split into two halves that essentially comprise your skeleton, right? The, uh, not just the exoskeletons, but uh, key uh, points in your bodies. Some has been referred to as chakras, high energy centers, or if you want even overall simple muscle to fascia connection points, right? Along this fucking line, all the way from the tip of your head, right? Where some people refer to as the crown chakra or like right at the top of the skull, going straight down to your fucking anus, right? So it goes all the way, like, and then coming out here. Hence why, essentially, uh, Don Tian work or stomach uh, strengthening and core exercises are so paramount in any actual uh, expert dissertation and instruction of uh, long-standing martial arts. Right? They're always harping about that because when you realize that every sense from just these three key movements, this, this, and this, and then the fucking cross diagonals of those things, like the combinations of this, you realize you fucking got everything you need. Like that whole fucking Mr. Miyagi approach. Wax on, wax off. Punch, punch, kick, kick, black, black, parry, parry. <laughs> right? And on both sides. Um, no, I'm just got. I'm talking about this in relation to like this, uh, Goku's theory and decision for uh, going from like Super Saiyan to steroids, bro, mode back to like su Super Saiyan one, and then building back up again. So like basically, uh, when you, you're you're when this energy stream, it's, remember it, it, it's this thing. This is the fucking pipe, if you will, and then through this pipe. You can think of it as like there's an energy field that emanates across it, right? Some people refer to it in terms of uh, uh, electricity and uh, uh, biomagnetism, right? So if, if you have someone who studies biochemistry, like my sister did, or bioinformatics, that's literally all they talk about. They talk about this. They refer to it in terms of the electrical, um, uh, if you want to put it, uh, outputs or outputs at the end nerve points, right? Like when there's a nerve receptor and a nerve receptor and they're exchanging uh, uh, proteins, right? To make the formation for a receptors or co-receptor. They talk about it, they refer to this, these relations as the fucking electrical outputs that join the two, a la capacitor type. If you're talking about a, um, um, electromagnetics or biomagnetics, electromagnetism, um, you will be talking about, for example, the brain, right? And how the neural, uh, the neural pathways that make up this fucking atomic nuclear engine that we have running in here, that literally is the CPU of everything that we do. And then you'll be talking, delving into how that neural pathways built from not just fibers, like think of literally fiber, like fiber pathways built with uh, a, a 
uh, tissue or matter um, that's a mix between some sort of like jelly type fat and then like a super conducive carbon molecule, right? We'll be talking about that in turn and how because of the, these two fundamental properties, um, you're able to essentially experience and witness and essentially uh, be privy to honor uh, the essential manifestation of like a super high conductive system, right? So you'll, people approach it from the terms of like uh, the cycle time of a body, right? How, how many minutes, how, much, how long does it take for every single, um, for the pathway, the circuit that comprise start here all the way to every, the, all the pathways that make up to like the end point here. Like imagine that all those pathways being one circuit and they form one line. How long does it take for your body to traverse the whole body, right? And then that gives you essentially frequency in terms of BPS, so pulse, and how that's essentially tied to overall metabolic activity, right? So oftentimes when people start working out and getting in better shape, the fact that they're peeing a lot is actually a really strong indicator of being on the path to wellness because um, frequent occurrences of the digestive, if you want to put it, uh, digestive or slash garbage uh, disposal processes of the intestines and the livers, they essentially um, function as the enzyme makers, the energy movers, the molecule packagers, and uh, the logistics of the the building blocks or the building uh, block creators that make up proteins, carbs, and fats. So along with their coenzymes and the multivitamins that need to come together to build those things. When you think about that and how these parts are literally the sole responsibilities of those things, water intake is the fucking winning metric behind actually seeing how well they're doing. Because when you drink water, it goes all the way down, all the way down to the neck, all and rests here at the end of the hypothalamus. It curves around the fucking uh, lungs, right? Where when it gets to this part, there's actually a curvature that does this, right? And then it sits right here in this little pouch. Literally the seat. This and funny enough, I was talking to someone about this. Due to the non-ergonomic -ergon shape, or if you want to call it, this elongated structure form that we're seeing that has essentially arose due to the needs and demands of evolution. Going from standing like this, right, and being this height, coming from, so you, we started out, started out like this, right, then we started standing upright, Started saying it right, started moving our shoulders back, and then started keeping our neck weights straight back as well. Our essential structure went from doing this to essentially doing this. Doing this. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. It went from doing this to doing this, right? And because of that, um, parts of the, if you want to put it, system that comprise the circuit are um, not as developed as they were originally meant to be by the processes that essentially kickstarted these by the body. Because due to, for example, um, the elongated of the elongation of the hypothalamus when we went from doing this to doing this um, the hips essentially fell into we fell in we essentially sunk our hips we shifted our back which did this lowering thing did like a rotate and lower right of about 90 degrees so at one point it actually started curving out really really thick or swooning but then because of that sitting down of it it just 
lost the room to fucking build cell. And thus uh, growth and creation did not occur there, right? So DNA stopped uh, long chaining out, right? There's a whole bunch of other places in the human body where this little thing happens. In the brain, for example, where at times you'll see it like this, right? So this is it. You'll see it like this. At times you'll see it like this. But surely it'll be like at an angle. And then I'm talking, uh, when you look at it, think of the brain, it's a brain stem, right? So I'm talking about the, the actual water and angled water position to top of stem, right? That physics. Because of it, uh, there are different uh, variants of it. It also leads to uh, different sizes in the key structures as you see in the brain, right? And because of that, that obviously leads to different uh, brain skull types. Thus, Neanderthal, Homo sapiens, Homo erectus, and Homo, uh, I always forget, Neanderthal, sapiens, erectus, and Homo nobili, something like that. Anyways, there you go. And due to that also, there's also particular physiotypes, right? Because everything, so imagine you draw a question mark, right? But the fucking uh, question mark from that dude, that 70s or 80s show, what's that guy? The question mark guy, what's his name? Anyone know? The Phantom, I think, right? That old school with the circle, and then you just keep drawing after the body. If this part of the thing is super fucking curved out or steezed out in a way, it'll literally lead to like, an already predetermined formulation of the rest of that component, right? So when you see huge lungs or wide backs or lats or an extremely over relaxed, uh, not just wingspan, but uh, if you want to put it, uh, what do you call these? What are these parts? What are these parts? What do you call these? Let's call it the lower back, right? I think, I think it's, you know, these are your backs, right? Extremely elongated lower back, right? In terms of it doing this, like curling in, right? And then just spreading out. It's because of the fucking continuation of that question mark start drawing for the brainstem and the brain on towards that body type. So when you see them really moving swiftly, or like being like super light on their feet, or being like fucking gazelles and shit. There's a basis for that. And physioanatomy. And I'm here to tell you, you can actually reverse engineer yourself by creating a process that will essentially like a fucking Legos block. A Legos tapestry masterpiece. Instill that same advantage into what you're doing physically right now. A natural way to where you don't have to like completely take do something different, but rather in a way that adds an extra step, like a double crossover to the left foot, or as opposed to the right foot crossover only in soccer. Check me out for that if you want more. <laughs> Anyways, but going back to Goku thing, uh, when you're when you're swaying, there's a huge fucking energy thickness, bandwidth, you have less malleability. And so what you have to do is actually uh, laser beam the fucking energy stream and thus actually just gain the strength in the pulling ability, right? Like, because think of, uh, for example, if you like, you need to pee for a long ass time, like you have a lot of fucking water. But you have this skillful way of actually being able to master yourself in a way to where it comes out has a stream, not just like a huge fucking burst, right? Like a solid, steady stream. Imagine you got like five gallons of you on this solid, solid stream. There is a solid and natural strength, endurance, agility element to the preserving of that steady, constant trickle flow out of that stream in a way that it doesn't just go off or like all of a sudden, but it's nice and steady. The same keyword from start of stream, start of 
It's P and a stream and of P. In the same way, if you're pulling all the way down, right, like some fucking masters in there, if you're talking about uh, Qigong, for example, another super under under understood and under, I guess, unexplained under explained art form in my book. Just due to like the fucking onset of like clickbait type marketing and like teachers that just talked about shit that look cool instead of really knowing what they were supposed to teaching me what to do. Um, there's just like a lack of development, uh, development, developmental instruction to the the education of. But when you're thinking about that, for example, some of them actually literally go beyond just ending here. Like they extend all the way out to the fucking uh, center of their stance of their foot and then imagining actually going all the way through the ground. That's why when you see them and they like do, for example, uh, katas, they're all like the way they always do it, the art form is just meant to display the perfect stance, right? Like how there is no way an opponent would be able to move you off your center of gravity. You would literally be unable to just of the sheer lack of being in pocket or the way that he would would not essentially affect the overall stability of the tensegrity balance force of the fucking stance you're held in in question. If you're more interested in tensegrity, I talked. I actually just talked about it in a video called Beto. Uh, um, let's see. Oh shit! I think I removed it. Oh swell. It is called uh, uh, Biomechanics Intro to Natural Form Balance Movement. And the whole purpose is, is essentially uh, talking about my practice of uh, implementing the cardio that I'm doing in that day in a way that's essentially executing on the muscle group that I am to work on for that day. So if I'm working, if I'm gonna work, train uh, shoulders, then I'm essentially, when I'm gonna do cardio, be uh, essentially implementing a shoulder stance guard, right, in my running. If I'm doing legs, I'm essentially gonna be doing a leg stance guard. And when I say leg stance or X stance guard, just think, uh, swag visualizes. Imagine there's a triangle, right? This is your awareness. When you're saying X stance guard, you're placing a triangle on the particular muscle groups. That's it. You're placing your awareness on there. So when I'm doing shoulders, my awareness is there. So I'll be running shit, the music will be doing, I'll do some shit, and then like I'll keep going. When I'm doing legs, I'll be like, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'll be super loud on my feet, I'll be like wide, I'll be using my calves, and I'll keep going. When I'm doing chest and back, I'll be doing this a lot, like holding it here. In a way that it's doing this essentially, implementing the inside muscles and the flexors often, and then also implementing my chest or my back. Right, like I'll, I'll actually use a more stretching out type or lengthening out type run jog for chest and back cardio day. Right, and then by doing that, what you're doing is that just has in tantra implementing or activating nuanced activation points you'd essentially be creating the muscle and the stamina endurance for nuanced and particular activation zones of these muscle groups so for example if you're running and you're doing this there's a way to where the spectrum of possibilities any which way by which this will ever be done can actually not be occurred or hit I touched on if I'm doing any variants of a chest and back workout. And it's super fucking cool and swaggy to think about. And that's actually the reason why I started doing that. It just hits angles in your body in an integrated way and holistically at another angle and levels that would not be done in a traditional standpoint. Uh, stance, lift, press type, like a workout regimen. Right? And it really adds another level of 
dynamic humility and uh, essential agility and overall prime metrics to my uh, if you put it, baseline health health state, right? Like baseline physical health state. So I'm able to not just run, but have a solid cardio in terms of like being able to pump out heart and breathe well. I'm also being able to like actually find uh, cool oscillating rhythm, rhythms that essentially merge with uh, different focus points or tandems, right? Like, so uh, shoulders focused tandem point where it's like doing this, a lot of movement with this type of thing, right? Or chest and back where it's like this kind of thing, right? Or uh, if you want arms where it's like this kind of thing. And all those little key nuances literally make me move multidimensionally. That 360 fucking swag that we all hope to cultivate and really exterminate the fucking competition when we step onto the soccer field or what have you. Right? Because it's super cool. You get you gain so much of an edge if while everyone is like used to just catering to this side going straight turning by natural instinct, almost automatic reading, to 90% of the time actually not game reading, right? To the zone or sector or foot that they're strong with. While you come in and you're like, huh, I'll check here, I'll check here, I'll check here. So dash line as opposed to dotted line, you check it. And at the end, you just look left, look right, and you just take a step back and it's like, <sighs> limitless. Look left, look back, take a damn decision. And it makes the fucking game so beautiful. Anyways, I rambled quite a lot and ranted quite far from my, my initial Goku story. But uh, if you wanted to know about that, there was that. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to go back to the masturbation here. Oh, one final poem about that. Uh, how to actually do Tantra. So one of the things, uh, and that's kind of how I started this, is uh, all too often people think that it's all about just giving yourself blue balls and just prolonging the gratification of coming, right? Really and truly, it's more about actually um, using the way that your body your balls, your phallus, uh, create erection in a way that uh, not just for the purpose of essentially bringing more oxygen, more blood, increasing activity to the overall region, the, the overall phallus, making it to where the phallus is doing more and thus the fucking phallus is overall thicker. Consistently held leads a higher baseline thick, which creates cell growth, or bigger cock. It's not just about that, but it's also, remember, back to that element of da -da -da, sens sensuality. Because when you do it in a sensual manner, you don't just masturbate, but you come in touch with yourself, right? It's not just about, like, getting your fucking head hard or your cock to stand strong and firm, right? But it is the overall, I guess you want to put it, jelking and ebbing and uh, uh, massaging and masticulation of the balls and etc. Move the fucking blood up and up and up and up. And all these particular and particular and super fucking tight and orgasmic, micro-orgasmic producing sensations by moment to moment to moment. In a way to like, when you pause for a second, the phallus, like the peak to fucking peak, rock hard Eiffel Tower standing firm of your cock makes it such a sight to behold. That for that moment, you don't feel and desire to do anything but just with sight. witness that sight to behold, right? This is the principle of Tantra for men. For women, 
it is the same method, same mindset, same methodology. Obviously, the approach and application is more uh, circular stimulation, right? As opposed to a vertical, uh, if you want to put it, jelking, right? But the principles stay the same. Um, to pleasure oneself is not only to discover how one loves the pleasuring of self, but more importantly, it is to essentially cultivate the ability of incorporating sensuality to the overall orgasmic climax creating and reaching um, creation process of the overall self-care session, right? So when you're playing with yourself, don't just rush to your clitoris and then meander around with uh, your vagina and then essentially flick the hood of your pussy, like the inner shaft walls, and then before shoving a couple of fingers deep in there, kind of gushing so hard and it feels so good. But more so, it's also about the stimulation of the titties, the nipples, how the overall cusp-ness, cuspness of your boobs actually add to the sensual sentiment that you gain every single town you compound this orgasmic creation mood elevation escalation process when you take it from that approach there is not it's not a gap or a leap to then bring in mental pleasures right things like recalling a really hot fuck playing a really raunchy and lewd video, right? Or enjoying uh, taking a nude, like a really nice one. Where your tits are really well showcased. Like your ass is like fucking just like popping out and just teasing us, wanting us to just like fucking just destroy it, ravage it, cream pie it, and then anal cream pie it. And on top of that, your hair just adding to the overall style, right? Style and like glamour that makes up the beauty that is you. It's all those things. All of those things that come into play when you play with yourself. Which essentially makes it to where when you talk about or when you bring up that video or you see that moment or you kiss or you think about that uh French tongue, right? And then at the same time, your your fingers just happen to be sliding just grazingly along your clit. And your other hand is just happened to be just along the side, outermost side of your titties. The producing effect that, that makes is just breathtaking. When you take that approach and you do it over and over and you just stay present to the moment with and in that approach, the session that you have, the moments that come thereof, uh, have a different vibrance to it. They have a different quality. They are unique and more so they're special because they are in that moment purely self expression exploratory and when you everything you do is both self-exploratory sensual and self-celebrating you can only have self-enlightenment so that is why tantra and why session play is so fun with someone else especially someone who you match with on a really 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 fucking deep physical, rapport, sexual, sexual chemistry level. In other words, when you have a fucking chemistry match with that dick, holy shit, man, holy shit. And I was telling someone the other day, I made a comment. Imagine, I have a feeling that like 99% of guys uh, can't make their girls come because they can't actually 
even secrete the proper fluids and oils that needs to be essentially meshed with in order to produce the chemical sensation uh, seeking pleasures that form orgasms and climaxes. Imagine that, right? You can't make her come just because you're not oily, bro. <laughs> Go figure. Anyways, get a jot. Got a client appointment here. Did over a fucking hour. I think I'm probably just going to release this piece of content somewhere. Hope you guys uh, keep a lookout on it for it at onewave.org. It's been a fucking pleasure and as always, swag fuck out.